my warm welcome goes to all the participants, resource persons, NSS program officers, faculty member of different departments, officers of the university, field staff from different NGOs, NSS volunteers, NCC cadets, research scholars, and students. I welcome you all. It has been a continuous endeavor of the Department of Social Work to network and collaborate with the institutions which are working for the upliftment of the society, engaging with the government and non-government organization, and doing action research is our priority. Our thrust areas have been mental health, public health, drug addiction, women and child welfare, disability, disaster management, entrepreneurship, livelihood studies, and much more. Recently, we have signed MOU with the Ministry of Food and Public Distribution. We have a MOU with Power Grid Corporation of India, USHA International, Tata Advanced System School Education, and at the same time, Department of Social Work is continuously providing consultative service to many NGOs. In addition to this, the faculty members are continuously involved with a lot of research projects, whether they are supported by ICSSR, ICMR, UGC. So this TOT workshop, will discuss the possibilities of including youth in disaster risk reduction. As we can all, we, we all know that how important it is to get involved youth in the disaster risk reduction. Because I believe that youth bring with them energy, they bring with them positivity. And I think that this training program with the support of NIDM, practical guidance will be provided so that the trainers who will go to the departments, to the various institutions, they will get involvement of the youth and we will be able to think something better for our society because we belong to a region which is vulnerable to disasters. So this training course is devised in such a manner. It's a five days course program. The experts are from NIDM and the experts are also local. We have people from academia, we have people from non-governmental organizations, we have people from civil society. So the program is kind of, um, uh, it, it has been developed in such a manner so that we can have field visits also. And this program is not only lecture method, there will be group discussions, there will be a lot of group exercises and finally we should be able to come up with some recommendations. I hope and pray this workshop brings good results which will benefit us all because this earth is everybody so it's not that it's not the responsibility of one department every single initiative which contributes towards the development of our earth our society that's going to bring better results i once again welcome you all thank you first of all i would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the uh Honorable Vice Chancellor for collaborating with NIDM for organizing this workshop and also given an opportunity to execute at uh, in the Kashmir region. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. We are looking forward to the future collaboration also to continue our collaboration with the University of Kashmir. See, in the past four decades, because of climate change, the intensity and frequency of disasters have been increased, and uh, at the same time, the youth's contribution in the different disasters like. Uh, Kashmir flood or earthquake, even Bhuj earthquake during COVID-19, the youth work was remarkable. Right. Considering this, uh, the NIDM has designed a course on engaging youth and adolescents in the disaster risk management and climate change adaptation. And this five days training program has been especially designed for NSS program officers, NCC cadets and NCC program officers and also with various uh, volunteers. And we have a different system like uh, National Service Scheme, National Cadet Corps, Nehru Yuva Kentra Sankaran and Civil Defense Volunteers. So to train them and uh, to ensure that youth participation in the field of disaster management, the course has been designed. And the 60% of lecture and 40% of the practical work will be there. And uh, there are two different modules. In the first module, they will be learning about the basic concepts of disaster risk management in India and uh, Kashmir's profile of uh, Azad. And uh, followed by the second day, they will be learned about the uh, role of youth volunteers in the disaster risk management climate change adaptation. And the third will be, they'll be going to the field to observe what kind of work has been executed by the youth and learn from them and they'll make a presentation as well as plan for how they are going to do it in the future. And finally, the volunteers who are learned from here, they will be a trainers in the, for this region and they will execute the same training program with other partners and in this particular region. So this is the purpose of organizing this program and outline and we'll be 
using different pedagogy like uh, video clips, uh, role play, group exercise and field visits and for uh, conducting this training program. Our Prime Minister's vision is also more participation of youth in DRR pre-disaster planning. We have also uh, our apex body NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority also create a mitigation fund for pre-disaster planning uh, for enhancing the capacity of different levels local level, state level, district level. NIDM also initiate, take initiative to start a program in your university network. This network is also provide opportunity to youth, to more engagement of youth for further enhancement, enhancement, enhancement of capacity of the youth. So the main crux of this, main purpose of this program to enhance the capacity of youth for future well-being. And for lots of examples, number of examples during the COVID time, youth engage in different initiatives like Bihar, Maharashtra, in during the COVID time. Also, quick response to orphan people, orphan orphans, and old age people. So they are engagement in different phase of disaster during disasters yeah post disasters yeah pre disasters during disasters their role relief and response and during the covid 19 also during the cyclone filling in odisha more, most of the nss and nyg volunteers participate actively to manage the response in odisha so this type of number of examples um, we have the where the youth also participate and engage to manage disaster in different levels. So youth engagement is very important and youth make a lead role and they, they are the future of our country, they are the leader of our country. So their engagement is very important, that, that's why NIDM take initiative to, to design such a program by like engaging youth and adolescents in DRR and CCA. Thank you. It's a, a privilege to be part of uh, the organizing committee of this five-day workshop, which is sponsored by NIDM and organized by uh, Department of Social Work in collaboration with National Service Scheme, University of Kashmir. Ma'am, uh, recently there was a, a meeting uh, called by Divisional Commission Kashmir and uh, the heads of uh, school education department and higher education department, uh, tourism and uh, NSS. Uh, I represent NSS uh, uh, from Kashmir University and uh, the government wanted more schools, uh, more higher secondary schools to be brought under the ambit of NSS. So uh, it was decided uh, uh, there in the meeting that more such schools have potential, higher secondary schools I mean, uh, which has the potential to carry out NSS activities, they should be granted NSS units. I already had a list of uh, 50 higher secondary schools which uh, will be granting the NSS units shortly. So to begin with, uh, we thought of since uh, this disaster management or this hands-on training of disaster management, it's an essential part of NSS activities. We have already done seven workshops in NSS wherein disaster management or this kind of hands-on training is part of the curriculum. So we thought uh, why not to begin with uh, these 50 higher secondary schools. So we, uh, I wrote to uh, Director of School Education to depute 30 of the uh, potential program officers. So all of uh, peop the people sitting here, uh, they are high secondary lecturers and you are going to be the program officers. So this will be your first training in disaster management. Of course you will receive uh, uh, one week training after this. So uh, so I, I uh, request you to be uh, present in every session. So your attendance, your performance here will reflect on the granting of NSS unit to your school. So this is a serious kind of uh, workshop wherein you will learn hands-on training how to respond in case of a disaster strikes. You will have some kind of knowledge they will demonstrate. In, uh, besides, uh, they will give you an overview of the uh, disasters that in case it strikes or the fundamentals of this uh, disaster management. I must thank the organizers for inviting me to deliver a talk on the theme of this conference. And I must also congratulate the organizers, Dr. Shazia and 
the INSS, Dr. Musavir, for organizing this five-day training workshop for training the trainers on a very important topic, which is of tremendous importance to the people of Jammu Kashmir. As Dr. Shahzia said, you know, Earth is our home, and this is the only home we have. And unfortunately, you know, we have divided this home into countries, 195 countries, five oceans, and then look at each of the countries. You have 28 states, so, so many UTs, then you have provinces, districts, and all that. And then comes to you a house which you say is my home. But the entire globe is your home. And because we think this small building is our home only, the problem lies there, I, I tell you. We have about more than two like houses in Srinagar city. But if you look at the global level and the problems, particularly with climate change, is because there is nobody who is owning this home. If you look, if you are following the COP meetings, conference of parties meeting, you know, where issues related to climate change are being discussed at the international level, and it's a global problem. You will see that when you see the positions that are taken by the nation states are very selfish and narrow. Our own country, or you look at the you know our own region, that you know though the issues are same, but you will see the how much disparity is there there between the neighboring countries when it comes to taking a stand on the climate change mitigation or adaptation. And it is also a fact that all of us live a life which is harming and destroying this home. Whether as individual, as community, as government, as nation, as world. And it is a paradox for me that we plan our destruction by having environmental unfriendly projects and then in these type of discussions we also try to form the strategies how to address those destructions that infrastructure projects are bringing to us. Isn't it a paradox? I think the problem is that, you know, every infrastructure development activity is, and this conservation, or when we talk about the caring for the environment, climate action, DRR, disaster risk reduction, all that, you know, they are in different, you know, compartments. They have no connection. It would have been good if we had an environmental friendly infrastructure development. And all of you have first experiences of facing the impacts of climate change. 2014, though it is almost eight years now, is still fresh in some of our, you know, some of the people's memories, those who faced it first time. We had our central business district, Lal Chok, under floods. 10 meter, 10 feet, 12 feet. Lalchok was, you know, the central business district of Kashmir was under floods for about 12 feet. And some of the areas in Srinagar city, 19 feet in flood. floods. Just last year, last month only, what happened in our neighboring country, Pakistan. One third of the country was affected by the floods. One third. It was a very extreme rain, you know, rainfall event. Same as in 2014, we received more than two feet of water in just five, six days. Two feet of water on the neighboring mountains and you saw it. Similarly, if you look at the you know, 2022 floods in our neighboring country, almost four times rainfall in August. And the very significant melting of the glaciers this year. You saw it. I mean, human memories are very short. February and March, in Kupwara, the temperature was 18 degree above normal. In Badrava, it was about 15, 16 degree above normal. You saw it in you know, February and March. Then you saw the heat wave all over the subcontinent. The temperatures crossed above 50 degrees. 50 degree above that, you know, you can imagine. And this led to massive melting of the glaciers. Now, we are monitoring, the University of Kashmir is monitoring the glaciers in the Himalayas, in the Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh. I tell you, this is unprecedented melting 
in the Himalayas this year. And if you compare, when I compare our results with the Alps, very you know, almost similar type of melting, which is almost three times than the melting we have been observing for the last 10 years. Now, together with this melting of glaciers, already the stream flows, the waters in the rivers were very high, four times above normal rainfall during the August and USA, one third of the country under floods. This is climate extreme. It will hit any of us. So we need to be aware of this. And then look at it. We say it is climate change. We are not responsible for the climate change. If you look at the footprint, carbon footprint of people in Indian Himalayas, it is one of the lowest. Pakistan is contributing to 1% greenhouse gases in the world. But look at the impact they had out of this. Because it is a global phenomenon. It is a global issue. The earth, which I said is your home, whatever happens in the west, in Europe, in North Europe, North America, its impact as here. You say that I receive, we receive the rains due to westerlies. Where from those westerlies come? They come from Atlantic Ocean. Fly over the Europe. So with that comes where the winds and all that, and all these greenhouse gases. Though we are not responsible for it, but we are facing the maximum brunt of the climate change. Now what is the solution? This is a common question I have been asked many times, that in Kashmir there is no industrialization. How come there is climate change? Because climate change is a global phenomenon and we have to face it. And we are very voiceless, I tell you. The countries in the region, which we call this Himalayas, you know, it supplies waters to about 1.4 billion people. 1.4 billion people. And if you ask me the top most important resource that Jammu Kashmir and Ladakh has, it is these glaciers. We have 18,000 plus glaciers. And some of these glaciers are as large as Sechen, which in one dimension is 66 kilometers from Baramula up to Anantana and maybe 500, 600 meter thick. So water tower of Asia supplies, you know, water to about 1.4 billion people. It is very important for the universities, you know, to have, to develop capacities to first up make their campuses as carbon neutral. I mean, the energy that we use is every rooftop in this university or other universities should have solar panels so that our dependence on that dirty energy is, you know, minimum, so that we go green. And this is for our own. I mean, one way we set an example for the society, at the same time, when the NAC comes to us, when the NIRF ranking comes to us, so if you are carbon neutral, you get a lot of, you know, points there. And it is very easily. Similarly, looking at 2070, when India will be carbon neutral, I tell you, there will be so many jobs in the renewable energy sector. So the universities have to provide a manpower to support the massive you know, investment in the renewable energies. And that is the India's commitment to the reducing the you know, climate change impacts. And you will see that, I'm sure you will see a lot of things happening in that. We are at present looking at what are the basic causes and concerns of the climate change, uh, as well as what can be the educative schemes to enlighten what can be the net result of this. Since I am, I am mainly basically from biological sciences and this has been a concern for almost last 30 years. We have been assessing the scenario of Kashmir Himalayas as such in terms of what is happening and what could be the probable uh, remedies and probable causes which can be under control. As was rightly pointed out by uh, Professor Shikhil Saab, we have been monitoring the Himalayas as a whole for different purposes of course to see what the changes are uh, and what the loss we have faced during the last three or four decades. Once I compare the pictures that I have taken when I was a student and a scholar, what the status was and once we compare those pictures of my student era, scholar era to the present era of 2020-22 and look at what the scenes are now comparable to what the earlier scenario was, changes different, entirely destructive. Uh, I will quote a few examples which will actually highlight what is the fundamental drawback of this cause. 
If we look at Himalayas as a whole, if we look at the diversity we had in the whole Kashmir Himalayan belt as well as all Northwest Himalayas, and compare that with what the earlier scenario was, in certain cases it is a natural calamity, but in majority of the areas it is an induced calamity. If we visit Gulmarg, if we visit Sonamarg, if we visit Pahalgaon, what the scenarios were when we were students and what the scenario is at present, we find that our attitude, both as students and scholars in our era was slightly different as compared to what the scenario of the students and scholars at present is. Nobody bothers as to how he or she can play a role in getting educated by interacting with the tribal community people by interacting with our seniors as to what they have seen, what we have seen. When we visited uh, for our first collection trip as botany students in the first semester, we had to walk from Tangmark to Gulmark because bus service was very rare. Morning and evening was the services and we walked through the paths and we had a patch hardly five feet wide and at present you can travel in your own vehicle up to Afar but not only Gulmark. If we visit Pahalgaon, if we visit Sonamark, how many parks have been created for decorative purposes? But question is, what is the fun of creating those parks in the green natural belt when the beauty is much more attractive as compared to artificially created beauties? I visited to uh, Amarnath Cave as a scholar way back in 1993. I had to cross roughly 47 glaciers. And the width of each glacier was more than 100 feet sometimes and the depth was, I couldn't measure that depth. I visited last in the year 2012, I couldn't hardly cross 7-8 glaciers on the way to Manath Cave. And the width of those glaciers was hardly 3-4 feet only. And that is in turn reflecting that the glacial uh, status is in turn alarming because maybe after a span of another 10 years we may not see even a single glacier. Look at Gulmarg, what density of the forest we had from Tangmark to Gulmarg and what the status at present is. Look at these streams and rivers. I was a resident of Safakal in the, on the banks of River Jalim. We could never dare to walk to the bank of River Jalim, that was the flow and depth. Now kids of the age of 7-8 can walk across the Jalim River. That is because of the destruction of forests and soil erosion with heavy snowfall and rainfall or soil is coming into these rivers and artificial islands are getting created within that. Look at Dal Lake and look at uh, the Nagil Lake. Whence we used to visit university as students, we had to see both on the right side Dal Lake on the left side Nagil Lake. There was not even a single garden or stin house constructed there. Now we have to search for these lakes. They are not there. Floating gardens were created initially to travel in their boats to any place. Now ultimately all floating gardens have been settled down and they have created kitchen gardens as well as residential colonies. And look at uh, the Anchar Lake. Institute of Medical Sciences was created. We have no objection to this creation. And, but the wastage of that is actually thrown into the Anchar Lake. What is the quality of the biodiversity in that lake? What is the status of the lake? Usually people from Sora area are complaining to government that we are not able to live in our homes because of the bad smell and aroma oozing out from that lake. Vestige of initial medical sciences floating into that lake. Look at Wooler Lake, claimed to be the largest freshwater lake of Asia. And if we look at the status of that, unfortunately encroachment and creation of uh, paddy fields on the banks of that, creation of housing colonies on the banks of that is also reflecting that we are not concerned about what is happening. We may of course consider the causes of global warming but we have also to look at what is our fundamental negative activities which is responsible for that. I have worked on medicinal plants for almost 30 years now. What I observed as scholar and student and what my scholars observe at present, we are very rarely able to collect a a sample of 10-20 plants from one side because of the destruction. At one time, Banavang and Podophyllum hexentum, an important anti-cancer drug was seen growing from Tangmag up to the Afarvat. Now we have to search for a group of five plants growing together. And that is an anti-cancer drug which we have destroyed with our own negative attitude. Look at water streams. 
Look at uh, what the cultural aspects was. We used to drink water of Jalim. That I know my parents used to tell me, Jalim ka pani itna saaf hai, pee sakte ho usko. Now you don't even touch that water because of the uh, contamination, because of the wastage being thrown into that. Look at Dal Lake. At one time, the water depth we could see and the clarity of water we could see. Now it is invisible. We can never see the bottom. And these are in turn reflective of the fact that perhaps the changes that have occurred, global warming concept is of great concern, but it will also be better to look at what we have done ourselves, what we have induced ourselves. We visited Gulmak, as Madam actually deputed us to Gulmak. We have created a garden there, there but in that garden there is an encroachment on the sites of the bus stand, which is in turn destroying what diversity we have tried to protect. And uh, creation of Mughal Road. Mughal Road creation was commercially in way out to actually facilitate the proper trade of whatever products we had, especially uh, food products we had. But during the creation of that Mughal Road, what we have destroyed, we have deforested huge area and impact of that is reflected now. You can see that we can see every year the road getting widened and widened and forest getting slightly depleted of the huge number of plants. And that in turn is again where we can be responsible not only in assessing and proposing what are the remedial measures. I have visited Ladakh many a times. Zojila will remain closed sometimes for six months, seven months. And once the road was open, on one side, left side, we had a whole mountain covered by snow on the right side. We had a belt of snow created during the cleaning of that road. Now, in the month of May, road is open. And there is no need of clearing that water, uh, clearing those roads, because the snowfall level has uh, decreased a lot. And usually we used to see in winter, even road from Lal Chok to University campus getting blocked because of heavy snowfall. Now we have seen those phenomena very rarely. And these are huge concern for all of us. As was rightly pointed by Shikil Saab, if this scenario continues, after 10, 20 years, we may have competition of glass of water. We may have competition for inhaling pure air because pollution level has reached a status where we usually in the open market cannot walk directly because of the status. And usually such things are speeding up at a level at which maybe after 10, 20 years, Kashmir may be compared with Rajasthan and Gujarat belt. That is the scenario. And it is our responsibility, our duty, not only to educate for ourselves what we should and what we should not do. And then try to educate our kids, our students, scholars. Especially, as I rightly pointed out by Shikil sir, we must educate students from perhaps fifth primary onwards. Because that is the stage where they can actually try to take our comments seriously. And they can play a role. In many states of North India, I visited to participate in such conference about biodiversity, about conservation and so on. And whenever we try to visit any forest for entertainment purposes, at the entry point, all of us, irrespective of the age, irrespective of the status, were asked to carry with us five to ten seedlings in poly bags. Pits were already dug out and we were asked to please plant these. Now imagine if the group was of 20, each was provided 10 plants, 200 plants were carried. Suppose out of 200, only 100 get adapted. What is the impact of that picnic? We are actually reconverting barren areas into green belts. In Kashmir, we have not such policy. We don't have such policy. It should be implemented. And whenever school kids, college kids, university kids visit these areas, they should be in turn asked to carry out these plantation drives so that they can help us. And they should also be asked to remove whatever wastage we have thrown, especially poly bags and other things we have thrown in the forest. If they carry it back to their homes and try to disperse it properly, that can be an important guideline to all the progenies that they can play a role. I hope and pray during these deliberations, the young kids here who are part of this particular workshop, they will be educated as to what their positive role can be and where they need help, who should in turn be able to provide them help, or they need guidance, who should be able to provide them guidance. So when we see the global warming and other effects, what Ramshusa was talking about, that any, any development throughout the world will synergize and will have adverse effects on any region in the, in the world.
So we as individuals, we as nations, we as communities need to be conscious and need to make concerted efforts to safeguard our interests and safeguard the climate change. I wonder where we were, it was a topic on uh, engaging youth and adolescent in disaster risk management. It reminded me that uh, when we talk about the youth and when we talk of the adolescent age, uh, we see as a student of sociology, though I am always talking to be more inclined towards social work rather than my own parents subject to sociology. There are definite reasons why I am inclined towards more towards the social work. When we talk of the adolescent age, which is considered as the most productive age, in economic terms, in social terms, in other all terms, it is considered as the most productive age. But uh, sociologically speaking, it is again the most vulnerable, vulnerable age to any sort of deviance. Whether it is the social deviance, whether it is any, any sort of deviance, this is the most vulnerable age of youth in this age group. When you talk of, it reminds me of my older days of learning and reading. And there is a, I already talked about it, that there is a Chicago School of Thought which talks about the crimes, which talks about the level of crimes in different concentric zones at different level. It uh, speaks of the uh, more crimes and less crimes in the most concentrated zones and less concentrated zones. So we all see that the age of adolescence is subject to any sort of deviance at any sort of time. And if it is not cured, if it is not taken well care, it can, it, it can have disastrous implications. We see that youth, when we see the flood of our own state, elsewhere state in 2014, or when we talk of the earthquake earlier also, uh, the role of youth is quite important, whether it is it can be positive and it can be negative as well. But fortunately when we see the floods of 2014, I have myself seen and we have witnessed it from the University of Kashmir. The youth or the students have played a great role in uh, rehabilitation or rescue mechanism at that very point of time. But the point is to be seen that the negative impact which negative role of the youth at different intervals of their life is to be seen and to be checked. We see that a uh, uh, youth what now Tusa was talking about a youth can plant a tree and a youth can cut a tree. So we can see the positive and negative impacts of the youth. Uh, at the outset I must uh, congratulate uh, our Department of Social Work uh, our uh, NSS wing and uh, of course the uh, NIDM uh, of uh, Government of India uh, who thought of uh, collaborating with the University of Kashmir and holding this particular uh, exercise in our uh, university as Professor Ramshu already said. Uh, university of Kashmir has organized many such uh, programs uh, at a very large level uh, at uh, you know national level and uh, where we had presentation of a huge gathering uh, from ministry from other uh, organizations uh, involved in uh, disaster management uh, and uh, every time the uh, university of kashmir has been very active and conscious that it's one of our responsibility uh, to make our, uh, uh, you know, faculty, our uh, community, our society aware of uh, the various hazards of uh, disaster management. Uh, in fact, I am very happy that uh, it's always been my concern that no research or no academic activity can be successful unless we reach uh, to the community and uh, to rope in our schools. I was happy to hear from Dr. Musavir uh, that now onwards we have to create an NSS unit uh, in uh, every school. So uh, it will be very nice to rope in schools and we already have some of the coordinators, around 30 coordinators who are with us. 
Uh, I'm sure that they will be very serious in getting the training. Uh, in this five-day uh, workshop, it's a training of trainers, a very important workshop because uh, they will carry on the work, they will carry on uh, the activity of uh, this particular, the motive, the objectives of this particular workshop uh, forward. Uh, and I am sure that as it is in every uh, workshop in training of trainers, some are very uh, dedicated, some are very hard working, I am sure. The same will be taken care of, some are uh, you know, very serious about the activities, although I am sure uh, if they have been deputed, they must be all very hard working and uh, serious. Uh, it's not for the attendance sake, uh, they should take uh, to be present for five days. Uh, please uh, learn something and take uh, this activity and take this information to your respective schools uh, where uh, you can uh, definitely then organize uh, for, the, uh, for awareness programs. You can have different painting competitions, you can have debates, uh, you can have uh, seminars. I know that we have very uh, hardworking teachers in our schools which can definitely uh, take up this uh, role. I have been a frequent visitor to uh, Leh and Ladakh. I used to com uh, you know, commute by road and seeing the uh, ambience and seeing the untouched nature on way, you know, I always used to be amazed. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, they are so aware of, uh, you know, uh, taking care of their nature. And uh, if you see or maybe if you see Kargil or you see even Ladan uh, itself, uh, very well they maintain it, even late they have maintained it so well. But somehow in our own valley we have never taken uh, care of that. Uh, perhaps uh, something wrong maybe, maybe in our uh, educational system that right from the inception as Professor Ramshu said, from Lavokeji itself, we should try to educate uh, our uh, children how to take care of their uh, environment. And uh, in this particular uh, program, in this particular workshop, a very important group has been chosen, that's adolescents. And as uh, the earlier speaker said, youth makes a change and I'm sure that youth here will also make a change Dr. Ramshu has already scared us of the consequences that are coming, you know, forward. So somewhere we have to stop it. We cannot stop it fully, but a little bit here and there, if by our efforts as academicians, as researchers, as teachers, which we, if we are able to educate our youth, educate our children, maybe in due course of time, uh, the change happens there. I would request NIDM uh, for any such programs to be organized in our university in future also where we can rope in the other universities, we can rope in the colleges or we can rope in the schools at a larger level for awareness. Uh, definitely always uh, most uh, welcome. And uh, I must say that uh, we also have, as Professor Parvez was, was saying, that uh, uh, we always have, uh, you know, uh, the mandate uh, of, uh, you know, such program in our university. I would definitely like to make it more visible. And this activity should be, uh, you know, connected with the community, connected with the youth, connected with schools, connected with colleges. I think we, uh, this is where we can make a change because research Unless it reaches to the society, it uh, reaches to the community, we cannot have the change. With these words, I congratulate Dr. Shazia, our coordinator NSS, and all the best uh, for uh, next five days. And I'm sure the ambassadors of schools will be trained today, will make a change in their own schools in a small, small way so that this mission is taken forward. Thank you very much.